Good day there. My name's Josh Sex, and I want to teach you something. So join me today, and you can learn about the Lincoln Index and the Mark and Recapture method. But um, this isn't really the best place to teach that. Let's head into the field, shall we? The Lincoln Index is used across multiple disciplines, but it's mainly used by conservationists to find out an estimate for a population size. This can then tell the conservationist roughly how many of the species there are in a given area, which can then be used to create protective areas or be used to determine whether a species is endangered or not. The Lincoln Index is actually just an equation, but it's used in tandem with data collected with the Mark and Recapture method. Let's do an actual example. Oh, that's quite a little sheep. Let's use them. Now, these sheep may not be endangered, but let's use them as an example. So here's the situation. There are a lot of sheep here. Far too many to count. But, I do want to know roughly how many there are in this field. So to save time, let's use the Lincoln Index. But remember, that's just a calculation. And in order to be able to do that calculation, we need data. So let's collect the first part of this data. And to do this, I'm going to use the name tags labelled Group 1. In the real world, scientists would use small, unobvious markings or similar. But we can't do that in game. So name tags will have to do. So what I'll do is walk around and tag 20 random sheep. I'll do you, do you, do you, 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 you. You, 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 you're not a sheep, you, you, and that's it. This will be our group one. Now I'll wait a decent enough amount of time that the sheep will mingle together and move around, but not be enough time that they could all be eaten by predators. Okay, time for group two. For group two, I'm going to walk around again and choose 20 random sheep, but instead of ma marking them, this time I'm going to lead them up and gather them around. So I'll choose you, take you, you, I'll take 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 you, won't take you, and I'll take you. And I'll just put them over here. That is not twenty sheep. Where have I lost my sheep? One second. Now that we've collected the sheep, we need to count how many sheep in group 2 were also in group 1. So I'll check each sheep and note down how many were marked to be in group 1. To make this easier for myself, I'll dye all unnamed sheep red and all sheep named group 1 to be blue. But this is just so that I don't miscount by accident. So, after counting and compiling my data together, here are my results. We had 20 sheep in group 1, 20 sheep in group 2, and 4 sheep that appeared in both groups. Now let's put that in the Lincoln Index calculation. N1 is group 1, so that'll be 20. N2 is group 2, so that'll be 20 again. And then 3 is the number of sheep which appeared in both, which is 4. So let's do the math. 20 times 20 is 400. Divide that by 4, and we get 100. So, after our calculations, we have an estimate of 100 sheep in this field. But how do we know that's actually correct? Welp, I've got the sheep farmer and owner of this field to tell me the truth. So, sir... How many sheep do you actually have here? Well, let me check. By using a command to give all the sheep in the area a random effect, I can tell exactly how many sheep there are here. So let's check that then. 96. That means... Because it have given 96 sheep the effect, it means we got 96 sheep in this field. 96 sheep in total. Is that good for you? 
That is perfect, thank you so much. 96 then? That is only 4 off of our estimate. That's pretty much perfect. Let's head back to the studio. Woo! Perfect landing. <sighs> Great to be back in here. Now, before I wrap things up, there are just a couple things I want to discuss. Namely, the limitations. Firstly, the size of the group does matter. Larger group sizes will give more accurate results, so if a species has a small population, or is harder to capture, then the data will become less accurate. Secondly, the animal may become more or less likely to be recaptured. The animal may become trap shy, where it learns to avoid traps, or may become trap happy, if lured by food for example. Thirdly, in the real world, markings may wash off, and if the animal is caught again, then it may not be counted as being in both. And lastly, this doesn't work on sessile organisms, which means organisms that can't move on their own. So, plants and anything that's basically stuck in one place, like an oyster, is out of the question. But apart from that, the method works well. As you saw from our example, we were incredibly close with our estimate, and as long as the method is done correctly and the species being surveyed can be accurately measured, then everything should go well. And now, with your newfound knowledge, Go out and test it for yourselves. Oh, and if you're doing A-level environmental sciences or biology, then you're going to want to remember this, since it will come up on your course, and maybe in your exam. But that's all for today, folks. Thanks for watching, and happy sciencing. Wait. Oh no, I forgot my elytra. <laughs>